At the heart of every fan fiction is the what-if scenario. It is an attempt to tell a new story hey all, here, and this is bad, real bad. using the work's pre-established concepts in combination with one's own. A good fan fiction is able to work with the original canon and pull out its hidden potential to create something that can stand on its own. When basing your fan fiction off of something as extensive as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, generally you can make it one of two things. An untold story of a character who hasn't been expanded upon like the others, or telling a brand new story using the things as they are and adding your own flair. Georgia Joestar does both. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. You get the untold story of George and his family, a man whose life was cut short, son of Jonathan and Arena, and the husband of Lisa Lisa. Holy moly. In this story, we get to see his whole life leading up to his recruitment into the Royal Air Force. Even including what happens between Arena and Dio on the escape from the burning ship and her arrival to the Canary Islands. I am under the water. Please help me. Then George's childhood living with Lisa Lisa, experiencing all the threats that come along with being associated with a talented Hamon user. We also get to see what life entailed in the early 1900s and the impact of bustling new innovations such as the automobile and eventually the airplane, and their impact on the world at large. We get to see how these events influenced George in his adult life, eventually leading him to become a pilot during the First World War. We also get a brand new story of another George Josar from the year 2012. A teenage detective from Fukui, Japan, that ends up in Morio after setting out to solve a series of locked room murders. Eventually, he comes to find out that all the surviving victims reported having the same dream of a man saying, If Jojo ever comes to Morio, I'll kill him. That man's name being Kira Yoshikage. Don't be intimidated, Starge. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! Yes, we are back in Morio and back after Kira. Just like in part 4, as our protagonist tries to find out more about him, along the way he's faced with more and more mysteries, resulting in the world around him growing stranger and more bizarre by the minute. It is also here where we get to see some familiar faces, but also many new ones. Ah, look at the top of his head! <laughs> you see, characters generally stay the same, keeping the same name, same stand, while others completely change. Generally, you know who they're supposed to be based on what you learn about them, but at the same time, they have new names and new abilities which beg the question, why do some of these characters change and why do others stay the same? This is where the idea of potential I mentioned earlier comes in, and it is important because the fight in George Joestar requires it to be almost limitless, where the fight is against what is both a friend and an enemy. A fight against an influence that has been inextricably linked to the destiny of the Joestars. One where the fight is against fate. Just what would the world have to look like to overcome a seemingly inescapable force? Just how perfectly would everything have to align to get us there? What could cause a character like George to stumble into this in the first place? In comes Kato Tsukumojuku, a child detective who's been present in both eras and working to guide both Georges towards something greater. Kato has the natural ability to solve any case he works in, no matter how bizarre. To him, it seems as if the world is shaped around him. This will be a minor spoiler, which you might not believe after what I'm telling you. He has this ability called Beyond. A god that has ensured him the role as protagonist, but Beyond is no longer with him. He tells both Georges that they now have been chosen by Beyond. He chose me. He chose me. Out of all others, he me World War I George being told that he is starring in a novel called George Joestar. Th that's me! That's me! which Beyond is the author of, and because of that, his adventure will be like no other. George from Morio is told that Beyond is a mystery novelist, writing a story in which he is the detective, a fact that he should be aware of. Do you understand? I have several questions. But this also comes with a warning. Gods do not play favorites and won't bend things to the point of disrupting the natural order. So yes, no ass pulls, even though God is literally on their side. Throughout the story, Kato acts as a guardian angel working between both worlds to lead things where they need to go on Beyond's behalf. By the way, Kato is a character from another fanfic, written by this author entitled Suko Mojuku. He was originally a character from the Japan Detective Club series by Yusei Seiyoin. It seems that Otaro Maijo has given him a new life of his own, which is one of the reasons why I love this book. You know, other than the whole breaking the fourth wall thing and the author becoming God. <laughs> There is also a new concept introduced known as wounds. After suffering repeat physical or emotional harm, a wound will manifest to protect the user from facing the same harm again. Unlike stands, their manifestation can cause pain to the host and seem to manifest subconsciously more often than not. Wounds can also be seen by regular people which must be taken into consideration by their users. 
One can be both a stand user and have a wound, or just have the wound by itself. Even stands have the ability to manifest a wound, causing them to grow their abilities to greater heights than ever thought possible. The general idea for power scaling and range for a wound is not the same as it is for stands, creating the potential for an extremely high reaching scale of effect rarely seen in the original series, at times causing Evangelion-esque situations. The novel is deeply inspired by the works of H.G. Wells, so much so that a spaceship that exists for no particular reason whatsoever, is named after him. From what I can tell, a good portion of George Josar's plot and settings are directly influenced by his most famous works, The War of the World and The Time Machine, which at the time of their publishing revolutionized the science fiction genre. Otoro Maijo borrows strongly from the concepts these works introduce and applies them to the story here, and in his typical fashion, takes it a step above, implementing the ideas of time travel and a multiverse, as well as a worldwide threat, using pre-established Jojo logic. I truly think having the genre of a mystery novel with a detective as a main protagonist works really well in the Jojo universe. If you think about it, nearly every conflict in the series starts with some sort of mystery. Who is the enemy? What is their ability? How can it be countered? What are their motives? For a successful victory, the protagonist and their allies have to seek out the answers to all these questions, much like a detective would do. And what makes it even doubly better is that the mystery aspect is amplified by the fact that neither Georges are natural born stand users and have to figure out how to deal with these situations as regular people. It reminds me a lot of Hayato Kawajiri in part 4, who was able to unravel the mystery of the identity of Kira Yoshikage during the Bites of Dust arc despite not being a stand user. If you enjoyed seeing the way he broke things down, and the gambles he took along the way, George Joestar takes the formula behind that and perfects it, creating for a really enjoyable story. Okay then, you might be asking, how does any of this make George Joestar the greatest fanfic ever? Think of all the potential we've seen throughout the series. Think of the ways Hamon can be applied, the growth and his versatility seen between parts 1 and 2. The idea stands and their inherent potential, just how far can a stand evolve, both with the power of the arrow and the concept of heaven, and its effects on the stand clearly shows that they have the ability to become something much greater than what they may initially seem. There is also the power of the saint's corpse, which grants boons to those who come in contact with it. Who's to say when and where it came from? It could all just be hearsay. What sort of things could one truly do with the power to reset the universe? What sort of impacts could the decisions of the one doing it have on the world at large? Is there power in belief? Like when Dio was able to stop time once he believed he could do so. What sort of limits are there to being the ultimate being? Is there any room for further growth? What kind of stand user would ultimate cars be? Just what could be truly accomplished through D4C's interdimensional travel if one put their mind to it? Any and all these questions are answered in George Joestar, not to mention the inclusion of wounds and beyond on top of that. Topping it all off with events the size of the War of the Worlds, and abilities so abstract that it can make it feel like Evangelion. All of these things come together to give George Joestar a fighting chance at beating his fate and form one cohesive yet eccentric narrative that I do not think can easily be topped. Suffice to say, there will be a lot of bizarre things going on, so much so that only a detective could begin to navigate it. To me, George Joestar is the ultimate what-if scenario, and as such, earns the title of the greatest fanfic ever written. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, maybe hit that bell icon just for me so you won't miss my next video. Be sure to read George Joestar 2. Also, check out my video on how copyright ruins JoJo and my review of Jojolian after reading it in 24 hours. Thanks for watching. More videos coming in the future, not just on JoJo. Farewell.